If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out-of-the-box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non-monogamy, then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multi-Amory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi-Amory Podcast, we are having group sex with Billy Prasida. Uh, well, okay, just kidding. We're not actually having group sex right now, but we're talking about it. Uh, Billy Prasida is the host of the Man Whore Podcast, which is about sex positivity. And on this episode, we talked to him about what it actually means to be sex positive, as well as some tips about sex party etiquette. How do you conduct yourself in a way that's respectful and, you know, filled with consent going into a sex party? And then finally, some techniques for managing jealousy when heading into a play party with your partner or really to any kind of situation with your partner. Some techniques you could use going into that to use in the immediate term instead of the larger term things that we've talked about on this show before. And with that, let's get to the interview. Hello, Billy. Hey there. Hey. Hi, everyone. Hey. Uh, so could you start us off by just giving us... There's so many of you. This uh, is so There's a million so of us. We're overwhelming, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Strength in numbers. Uh, could you just give us like a quick explanation of you know what it is that you do, what is, what is your podcast, that sort of stuff? Uh, so I host a show called The Man Whore Podcast, a sex-positive quest for love. Um, each <laughs> week I talk to women I've hooked up with about sex, dating, sexuality, butt stuff, porn, mm-hmm. yes. things like that. Uh, and then I also have uh, expanded to now have on like various sex educators, porn stars, sex workers, queer performers, and other stand-up comedians. Um, okay. I'm a stand-up comedian sometimes. Uh, yeah, and so that's the show that I've been doing for two and a half years now. That's awesome. Oh, nice. Well nice. done. Yeah, nice. it's a, almost exactly the same amount of time we've been doing ours. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Oh, we're it's podcast as if, as if the universe meant us to be together. <laughs> mm. Aww. <laughs> um, so I kind of want to take us in here because I really, really like the tagline of your podcast. You know, the fact that you call it a sex positive quest for love. And I mean, sex very necessary. Yes. Yes, of course. Sex positivity yeah. is an interesting topic. And so, I mean, first I want to open it up to you. Like what, how do you define sex positivity? Um, I mean, sex positivity is just saying it's cool for people to do whatever the fuck they want to do. I, hmm. I still don't understand why anyone gives a shit what people are doing behind closed doors or in certain corners of a park. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, part of the reason I have the subtitle there is the subtitle is important because if you just see man who are podcasts and you think it's like bitches, I banged with Billy Prasida. Right. Or like the <laughs> pickup artist uh, podcast or something right. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. great title. It's, it's just not that show. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, because I look, I have this face. Uh, I have a very like maybe voted for Trump face. I have to yeah. kind of like, oh, cl- you know, clarify that. That's a terrible kind of face uh, to have. I'm sorry. I know it's, uh, <laughs> but like that's the worst that's gonna get for me. So it's <laughs> fine if people just give me side eyes. Okay, uh, right. But yeah, so no. But sex positivity, I think, is just you know accepting people or have different kinks that you may not have and you don't have mm. to understand them but just have mm-hmm. to let them go do their thing and you don't have to understand why two men want to go fall in love just be like i don't get it but you have fun with that yeah you can pee in that bathroom uh, mm-hmm. all the things man just like mm-hmm. let the genders right. and the orientations do their stuff yeah, yeah. No, uh, i think it's also that Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say, uh, the other part is just that like uh, sex is a good thing and that it is good for you um, mm-hmm. and pleasure is good and yeah. yeah. So I think that the interesting thing is that I feel like sex positivity very much grew, it was a little bit of a reactionary movement, I feel, um, to people becoming slightly more aware of the inherent and ex- somewhat extreme sex negativity that most of us were instilled with, you know, most of us grew up with, you know, I feel like American culture specifically Mm -hmm. is a relatively sex negative culture. Um, 
I mean, did you, when you were growing up, did you feel like that was a particular influence on your life? Did you grow up or did you grow up in a kind of a more sex positive home? Like what was your experience when you were young? I, I grew up kind of in a sexless home. Uh, sexless. I, <laughs> Sorry to I hear mean, that. No one was really concerned about Billy with girls because girls weren't really an option for me. I was a very hmm. like socially awkward kid. I didn't really have a lot of friends or any friends. I didn't know how to talk to women until I was about mm -hmm. 18. So yeah, that was a motorcycle gang that just drove by. Sorry. About that. <laughs> okay. You're like, cool. I didn't know happened? if this was like the beginning of another Cloverfield sequel and like California is <laughs> about to fall, but I can't see it. <laughs> It's like, hey, we got to end this podcast early. Uh, let me get my plugs in in the beginning of the episode before the world ends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. So, like, no one was really concerned. The most that would happen was, like, I'd get yelled at for jerking off like, mm. uh, on the family computer. But, <laughs> like, that was oh, about dear. it. That's I mean, quite well, an we've image. all been there. Well, yeah. it was like the only computer. This is before, you know, having your own laptop or your right. own computer in your room. So you do, you go sneak down like 2 a.m. and hope you can sneak in a quick one before someone catches you. So, yeah. so for um, me, it was like the scrambled Playboy and Spice channels rather than because ah. the, the computer was up by my parents' room and that just wasn't mm -hmm. really an option. But the but the TV well, downstairs. Well, I mean, the, the, t the TV room was an even worse one. It was even more out in the open because, uh, again, see. it's like the family TV. And, and right. uh, you eventually come to learn, you know, uh, what the password is. For all the you know parent protected channels, it's always. Oh, like see, your we mom's just didn't birthday. have them at all. We had the cheap, super basic channels. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, uh, we had them. I just couldn't. <laughs> I'd always have to sneak in whatever it was. You know right. what it was? I just relived this memory with someone. Was my dad had this old um, cigar box, and I mm -hmm. remember I have this distinct memory of being like third grade, and the box i maybe it was cuban and there's the woman there's a little painting on the inside top and the woman mm -hmm. has one breast out right. and it's like a good it's a really Just good a single titty. breast <laughs> and i remember being like really transfixed on it when i was like eight mm -hmm. wow but yeah so no i wasn't shamed for sex but you know i don't know maybe if i was more active i would have been mm. right who knows mm -hmm. i see no that makes yeah. sense that makes sense now, your experience of doing this podcast, because, you know, it is interesting you point out the fact that it could be so easily misconstrued, again, as just like, mm -hmm. let me brag about all the people that I've banged, you know, like, <laughs> right. it could so easily overlap into the pickup artist arena. I mean, and I imagine, have you found that there's been like, have you gotten a lot of flack uh, because of that perception from people? Uh, I think when people hear me talk for five minutes, they go like, oh, this is not that guy they might That's go like it. oh he's an asshole but <laughs> you know he's not like a sexist misogynist whatever else twitter has called me uh, sure <laughs> right yeah and at worst an asshole but uh if they hear me talk they like realize i'm on the right side of the issues yes yeah, yeah. No, that's to me. That's that's super fascinating because when we started our podcast, one of our things was that we specifically wanted to create a podcast about polyamory mm -hmm. that wasn't about sex because all the other ones out there were, you know, even though we're all sex positive people as well, but all the podcasts out there was like polyamory and kink or like polyamory and tantra or right something else, and we were like, yeah, hey, but yeah. What about just polyamory for? everyone else the you know like it's not just <laughs> yeah. just polyamory by itself like you know you could be super kinky and monogamous or you could be really vanilla and monogamous and the same is true with polyamory mm -hmm. um, a lot of people assume that poly people are really slutty and yeah i've even uh wrongly assumed that before I, mm -hmm. I went on a date with a woman close to a year ago and you know, I knew she knew all the people who went to the same play parties as me, mm -hmm. but I just assumed that like, oh, she's like really slutty and not at all. Like she doesn't sleep with guys very quickly. She doesn't even fool around much unless she really mm -hmm. likes it. I just, you know, I, I've wrongly assumed that for sure. Interesting. I think that's a common misconception probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Definitely. I think it it is interesting, you know, on our podcast, we do talk a lot about gender dynamics as well and how, you know, those kind of perceptions can be different, a split along gender lines, you know, like I feel like a man who, either a man who is polyamorous or non-monogamous or even I feel like a man in your position who is sex positive, you know, the perception can skew a number of different ways. You know, I think frequently for men who are polyamorous, it skews to like, oh, awesome, you're a player either it's oh awesome you're a player oh it's like oh you asshole you're a player mm -hmm. um right 
And then, you know, for women, obviously it's very different, you know, that it tends to go along, you know, more the slut shaming category. Yeah. Or the, the or one. the positive is the like, wow, you're such a liberated woman. That like well, both uh, of them. No, have, that happens a lot like less in my it's opinion. Like good for you for fucking all those guys in that gangbang. Like <laughs> that's but your feminist just, moment. Yeah. But it's not just the liberated woman thing. Like the positive side of that is like, oh, you're so liberated, that means of course you're gonna sleep with me. Um, sure. right right sure is where yeah. it they tends fuck. to go and so they so see it that is in your tinder bio and yeah so it it yeah. i think that you know we hit this when we did our own podcast episode on sex positivity this idea that like actually the poly community can sometimes be surprisingly sex negative mm-hmm. i think because of wanting to pull away from that stereotype that we're all a bunch of sluts mm. you know like kind of the the party line of a lot of the poly community is like well it's all about the love it's all about having more love it's all about having more relationships it's all about getting so deep and it's very similar to you know what had to be the party line with the gay rights movement was that it was it's all about the love it's all about the relationships you know like Mm -hmm. because we can't talk about the fact that there is sex too even though sex often is a very big part of it yeah Mm -hmm. Um, so it is interesting that that effect has kind of i think cause some parts of the poly community to actually become somewhat sex negative. Was there a question in there? Uh, <laughs> no, I know, right? there wasn't. We, so I, mean, I, I totally, I totally, I totally agree. I just, uh, it was just me I, I can totally see that before you brought up, um, the, the gay movement from, you know, whatever, maybe sixties. Uh, mm-hmm. that's why I was thinking too. Cause I, I read this book, um, not gay by Jane Ward. Great book. And uh-huh. you know, uh, she made a, a similar point that that was like a turn in like the politics of things where it stopped becoming about the the, the love and became about the sex act or the other way around. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, I can yeah. see that where it was like we want to be accepted by like the mainstream culture and they can um, they can empathize with love because they do love. Right. Mm-hmm. So if they're not slutty people. Uh, yeah. So I don't know right. what I'm trying to say there. Yeah, uh, right. Because no, 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 they, okay. they they do love, but they they can't admit to doing butt stuff. So we can't, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we can't talk about that. And that's just the goal of my show. I just want people to accept butt stuff more often. <laughs> uh, so so before we move on, I just want to take a moment to clarify the term slut or slutty, because um, it's something that we don't use a lot on this show. But it is, I mean, one of the sort of poly bibles out there is called the ethical slut. Um, so it is a term that there has been a lot of effort to kind of reclaim within the sex positive world. I have a lot of female friends who really try to embrace that word slut or slutty and kind of take away that negative connotation. But I did just want to bring that up for a second and uh, kind of acknowledge that before we move on. For sure. Yeah. I just always assume when I'm on like shows like this or what any shows on uh, about sex uh, in the iTunes category, I just assume that we're all <laughs> using the same thing. I've had right. I've actually had Dossie and Janet on the on the man whore podcast. That's uh, awesome. So, yeah, I, I also use it in that way. That means uh, anyone who just thinks sex is awesome and good for you and, you know, should be fun. Yeah. So nice. glad we c- okay. clear that up. Yeah. Yeah. Have you by any chance read the new topping book or the new bottoming book that's also by by them? They're amazing. I, I have read uh, no books about topping nor bottoming. Uh, <laughs> so this is not about like anal sex topping and bottoming, but about BDSM like kink. Right. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a I'm not a kinky yeah. person. I'm pretty damn vanilla. Uh, ah, I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah. So I haven't read any of the books unless so, my girlfriend gives me one then. Yeah, you know, they're not <laughs> right. Read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So th- those two books, though, like I would highly recommend them. We we did a book review on them a while ago, but like I still think about those books today, even just mm-hmm. in terms of like understanding the mindset and like the the sort of deep emotional experience that BDSM can be. Sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, it was highly recommend fascinating. it. Yeah. I mean, I and- raise your book recommendation with another sex with shakespeare is the best book i've read this entire year that sounds awesome it's by jillian keenan uh i just recorded with her uh last week but it's just a phenomenal book it's a memoir i don't even fucking like memoirs because i think they're super (laughs) self-important but it's um it's about her how she came to accept her relationship to kink her spanking fetish uh specifically uh Uh through her love of shakespeare Uh, i I don't like shakespeare i'm not kinky and i love the book 
Wow. All right. Yeah. That's well, awesome. That's we'll quite definitely an take a look right at that. There. Yeah. And yeah. you say that you're not a kinky person, however, you still are into <laughs> group sex. So I definitely wanted to talk about that. Um, mm-hmm, sure. Kind of what uh, what has been your experience in the group sex scene? Um, it's it all started uh, when I was a young 19 year old on Craigslist in New York wow. City. Um, oh, that's the place <laughs> to do it. No, go on. I want to hear this story. <laughs> um, well, it's just like you know, I, I went to college uh, at NYU, so I was here in New York City, mm-hmm. and I was a single man, and it's New York, and I got curious. I went on Craigslist, and you know, it's uh, it's not that like I'm into group sex. As much as I did the like economics in my head, I realized that all the W for M ads are for like cam girls and sex workers, which is great, which is fine, but that's not what I was looking for. It's hard to mm-hmm. find like a genuine woman just looking for casual sex on Craigslist. Right. I did the math though. Uh, if I am okay with at least one other or more penises in the room at the same time, I can increase my likelihood of getting a blowjob from a woman on mm. Craigslist because it's usually nice. like a couple mm. looking for another guy or looking for a bunch of guys. And so right. I, right. I was like, I could probably be okay with that. And uh, turned out I was. <laughs> wow. So I started going to like bukkakis and gangbangs in New York and that slowly mm-hmm. uh, led me to invite to invite to invite to eventually I got invited to my first like real sex party. And I, then wow. I started going to those and you know from there you start meeting more and more people who invite you to other things. Wait, is a gangbang different than a sex party? Yes. I'm sorry very, for well, my yes. very yes. very good my- question. <laughs> No, no, no. This is a, I just, a phenomenal I don't question. Know. <laughs> I haven't been um, to a sex party. Oh yeah, no. It's a, it's a it's a great question. Just like what's the difference between a bukkake and a blow bang? I understand. Yeah. Um, a gang bang no is just, you know just one lucky person of really any gender uh, who wants to just get fucked by a bunch of uh, dicks or phallus strap on objects. Right. And, it's like uh, all toward one person in the center. Oh, yeah. As yeah. It were. Oh God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Whereas a sex party is a little more like a, yeah, like a like party, a little more people. fluid. Right. Yeah. Better. I mean, people. I get a lot of people, like especially a lot of the other comics, uh, when I'm hanging out at shows. They, I talk about this stuff on stage, and they're like, "What's right. the parties like? Tell me about the orgy." <laughs> and I'm just like, "I don't know, dude. It's just like a regular house party, except people right. are fucking." Like, yeah. you know how, like, at a house party, you try to go find a room to sneak into to fuck? Uh, the doors are open at these parties. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, like, there, right. Might be a, there might be a kink scene going on next to the chips and dip. You know, it's that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Chips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like chips. And Emily has been craving chips all night, and I don't have any chips in my house, and I feel really bad about yeah, it. I feel yeah, really yeah. Bad thank, you, thank you for bringing that up, Emily. I'm just drinking yeah. more wine. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so, I, I mean, my, my experience with group sex started in college when I was answering ads on Craigslist, and I just... Mom. Mm-hmm. got more comfortable in a group setting by doing it over and over again. Uh, so before we continue, we wanted to give a little shout out to our oldest and awesomest. No, they're all awesome. But one of our most um, celebrated sponsors, adamandeve.com. Mm-hmm. They've got an amazing array of adult videos, sex toys, lingerie, condoms, all sorts of stuff. Um, they were our first sponsor we ever had, and they're still great. Uh, if you use the promo code MULTI, M-U-L-T-I, at checkout at adamandeve.com, you can get 50% off of almost any item in the store, plus three free DVDs, the Power O vibrating ring. And free shipping on the whole order. That was so well done. Thank you for that. You're welcome. (laughs) And free shipping on the whole order. And best of all, part of your purchase will help support our show. Um, It's a really cool company. They've been around for a long time. We really appreciate you supporting them as well as supporting us. Um, Also, if you would like to support us directly, you can go to our Patreon. Yes, go to our Patreon if you find that in your life you just have too many sex toys. You do not want to order more sexy things from Adam and Eve. You're uh-huh. sick. You just cannot move. 
in your house uh-huh. for all the sex toys that you have, yep. then yes, please head over to our Patreon. Um, that's patreon.com slash multiamory. Mm-hmm. Um, you can join our Patreon community. Um, so even, you know, donating at the $1 a month level will get you some, you know, little perks. Um, at our $9 a month level, you get invited to our monthly video discussion groups. At our $5 a month level, you get invited to our private Facebook group, which has been super awesome, like a great space for people to come. You know, people come with their problems that they're having in their relationships to get advice from other people or they post silly pictures of themselves or you know interesting articles Uh that they found on the internet or we'll toss out ideas for our episodes and have people respond to it so yeah if you want to support us directly and also become part of our patreon community again go to p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash multi-amory Yeah, and lastly, we would appreciate it so much if you could take a little moment to write us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps other people to find us. It helps us come up higher in search results. And it also helps other people to know what to expect. What are we about? What have what have you gotten out of this podcast? Uh, We really appreciate that. Doesn't cost you anything except for a couple minutes of your time. Uh, Thank you so much for that. And please get in touch. Be involved with the community. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, let's get back into the interview. Back to you, Billy. God. Are we going to keep that in? I certainly hope so. (laughs) We don't have to. So it's interesting, like, your first story is actually a good transition into kind of our next question. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I love that you talked about doing the math, and you realize that Actually, if I'm okay with another penis being in the room, like this is probably going to go a lot better for me. And so it's interesting because, um, you know, we have, I mean, we've talked about this whole spectrum of male sexuality many times on this podcast and also about, you know, sexual fluidity with men and what's encouraged and what's not. Um, But specifically, I feel like, you know, straight men tend to get really stumped when it comes to thinking about group sex situations because it's like, well, if I really am straight, Like, how can I enjoy group sex if there is another penis in the room? Like, how do I get over that? Not only physiologically, but also Uh, psychologically. You you get over it while your penis is inside a vagina. You you tend to forget about all the other cocks in the room. Wow. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's like it makes me think of um, I don't know if you guys watched Entourage at all. I watched like the first few seasons of that. and, And something came up where two of the guys on that show both were interested in a girl and they did that sort of stereotypical thing of kind of fighting over like who is going to get to be with her. And like, finally, you know, we're like, well, fuck it at this party. Like one of us is going to do it. Let's just ask her. And they ask her and she's like, well, why not both of you? Right. (laughs) And then, you know, then it cuts to the next morning where the two of them are like super awkwardly eating breakfast being like really uncomfortable. And one of the other guys is like, what's going on here? And they're like, we, what is the term they use? Like crossed swords, I think, is the term they... Uh, yes. And they, they were super uh, uncomfortable about this. They're so uncomfortable, they're acting like they fucked each other last night. <laughs> right, right. And that and that yeah. that's something that they're, like, ashamed of, or that they're... they're yeah. yeah. So it's... I, I feel like I only bring that up because Entourage is this... Falls into this category of comedy show for me that is kind of representative of what sort of the culture of a whole thinks about these things because it's a very popular, fairly mainstream Hmm. comedy that like tries to push Hmm. some limits. I think Sex in the City is kind of a similar type of show where like if they make a joke about it, it's like, okay, I have a good sense that a lot of the... A lot of our society this thinks yeah. this way, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I mean, they act like a threesome is the most scandalous thing, but <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, those are starting to become more blasé. I mean, even yeah. even Kink now, uh, you know, Love or Hate, uh, mm-hmm. Fifty Shades of Grey, it did exactly. normalize it. Yeah. That mm-hmm. A lot of people are, are talking about it, and they don't yeah. see it yeah. as crazy, so long as it's, you know, like some lighter kink is now socially acceptable. Mm. Right. Yeah. More th- at least more than it was... 10 years ago, even if it's not fully accepted now. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Yeah. Um, But, you know, with stuff like Entourage, I don't know. uh, (laughs) Some dudes, they they get caught up in the whole dick crossing thing. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to grab your dick. Uh, I'm willing to share. I don't mind. I'm just happy that someone said yes to me. If there's uh, other strings involved, uh, I'll see if I can accommodate. Hmm. Right. Um, I do have a question for you. Um, Something that we have, not yet well we've touched a little bit on this podcast before but 
kind of the the politics of being a single man trying to get involved in the group sex scene. Mm. Ooh. What have you yeah. got to say about that? <laughs> um, you know, it, it uh, if you're looking in the wrong places, it can be expensive. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like if you go to like a typical sex club, it's gonna be like this crazy high price for single men, right. discounted price for couples for, and of course it's a heterosexual couple. It's not gonna yes. be like yeah. any couple, right? Yeah. yeah. And then women, single women, get in for free, and yeah. I, I don't fucks with that type of setting. Uh, mm-hmm. I I got very lucky. Uh, the first group stuff I was all going to were privately organized things, and they mm-hmm. were things where they were looking for more men than one women. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they want seven dudes and one girl. That was the scenario. Okay. When I right, again, right. Invited to parties, like the first party I got invited to, uh, it's a very like queer friendly party. They have like all the genders and orientations and such there. So mm-hmm. it's really all, everyone's treated equally, which I like, like everyone yeah. pays the same price hmm. at the door. Right. You know? Yeah. Like it doesn't matter what parts That's you rare have. to find. It's a lot so of right. It feels like it's yeah. so rare, yeah. And I, so I think I, I got lucky that that was the first place uh, I found, yeah. and that's the, pl- that's basically the only place I go, uh, because mm-hmm. I, I think that's the fair way to do it. That's the type of environment I want to be, and I don't want to go to a place that's like tree and women like they're like a, um, like a bargaining chip. Yes. The sorts, yeah. You know, yes. Like, well, I should be able to get in. Look at the that. hot chick I brought with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, right. I, I, that's a that's a vibe I don't like. Well, yeah. or on the other hand, yeah. you go to those parties where single guys have to pay, you know, three hundred dollars, and a couple pays like a hundred, and a single woman gets in free. Mm-hmm. There's this certain thing where, like, a guy that goes and pays three hundred dollars walks in feeling entitled, entitled to yep. getting sex because yep. he pays three hundred dollars for it. It's 100%. like it's almost undoing the thing that it's trying That's to accomplish. Up. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's so interesting how I mean, because I you know looking at that model, I mean, it, it's I guess it just must be a holdover from from you know swinging trends in the seventies, right? When it was all just you yeah. know heterosexual mm-hmm. couples. Um, mm-hmm who are extremely monogamous and before there was kind of this acceptance of like, yeah, let's actually have a space where like it is okay to be bisexual or to be yeah. queer or to, mm-hmm. to fall outside of this heterosexual norm. Um, cause I agree. Cause it, like that has been my problem with most swinging or play mm. spaces is that they're super heteronormative. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, very gender specific, obviously there's, you know, the difference in pricing, but then also the fact that, you know, it's often, it's like, it's encouraged that women can engage in homosexual activity, but men cannot, you know, the idea is Mm -hmm. like, if you're looking for that, go elsewhere. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think like it, there definitely needs to be more play spaces that are like the space that sounds like that you found that are so much more across the board. And I think it just depends on like what you need. Like if you're a heterosexual couple and you only want to play with heterosexual couples and you know, mm-hmm. you're not comfortable seeing um, same sex activity between men, then like, yeah, go to that sex club uh, where it's going to be seedy and gross and they have a terrible buffet. And that's like, that's a party for you. But uh, I think it's important. Yeah, definitely to have more parties that are like that, that are more yeah. queer friendly, that are very neutral and kind of accepting of all. Also, you know, even in a, whether it's heteronormative or not environment, people are forgetting um, you do want more men than women, at least because we run out at some point we need a break <laughs> like you need to have if you're a woman who wants a bunch of dick like you need more cock to come in <laughs> while the first guy's resting uh there's like like there's a logistics issue where you do actually want more men mm-hmm. i mean in theory if you're a, a woman at a sex party who's looking for a lot of dick yeah you're gonna want a lot to choose from because we're all gonna get tired it, yeah. i'm gonna yeah i just want to add two things to that yeah, One please. Is, is is something that uh, my roommate Eric and I, Eric's been on the show before, yeah. for those of you who've heard him, but uh, we've recently been trying to kind of reverse the terms being a pussy and and sacking up or whatever. Um, because when you really think about it, like pussies can take a lot. Fuck yeah. And the testicles are very weak when you <laughs> yeah. think about it. Uh, so we've, we've started saying to each other something, if we're playing like a video game or something, it's like, stop being such a pair of balls. Like, pussy up already. Like, <laughs> I'm, Thank I you wanna, for that. I want to figure out, I've been trying to go with wuss recently. I'm like, hey, let's not attack anyone's genitals. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's, that's, yeah. I'm, tr- I'm, a, I'm attempting <laughs> yeah. to change my that's language good. into that. It's difficult, okay. nice. but yeah. Nice. 
Uh, and then the second thing I want to say is that, um, like, I've also recently been part of, uh, like, a, a play party group that's been trying to grow and expand. And mm. one of the things that's come up is this debate about how do you do that? Um, because there's some people who want to go, yeah, single men have got to pay a lot more because I worked so hard to get this woman that wants to go to me with this. Right. Like, that's kind of. <laughs> Right. Jesus. That's the mindset coming in. There's sort of this ownership thing that goes into it. And one of the things that fortunately for this group, and, and this is why I, I like this group, I hang out with them socially even. Like I'll go to play parties for the social part and even leave before the play part starts. Right. And just be like, it was awesome hanging out with you guys. Like I have work tomorrow. See ya. That's uh, so important in picking a party is like, yeah. that's why I like the party. It's not just that's like very gender neutral. It's that mm -hmm. it really is like a house party. And so I always, I always felt comfortable because I used to, the first year I went there, sometimes I brought a date. Sometimes I went by myself, mm -hmm. but I always felt like I could go there, just hang out, not fool around right. with anyone and still that's have great. a great time. And exactly. I think that's the, that's the vibe you want. Cause there are parties yeah. where that's not the vibe. The vibe is like yeah. at midnight, we're all going to be fucking. So good luck if you just wanted right. to hang out. Yeah, yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. So so the thing I wanted to get to with that, though, is that with this group, um, you know, it's the, the reason why I've liked this group is because of that. And also because the woman who is sort of the, the organizer and the person in charge of this um, is kind of on the same page about not wanting to go down that route of charging men more as a way to try to balance things. But instead, it's kind of stayed a little bit more of a closed community, right? That you can kind of only get in by an invite from someone else, and you'll only get invited back if you show yourself to be a good, safe, respectful person. And so my question for you was that, was kind of about for really men or women out there, because I will say at these play parties, I've definitely had consent violated by women hmm. as well, yeah. right? That, sure. that, cause they're never taught to think about that. Uh, we're not yeah. really taught either as men, but women are taught so even less than we are in mm. terms mm -hmm. of needing to get consent yeah. before doing something. Um, but I guess I just kind of wanted some, like if you were gonna tell people going into a play party situation or Whatever it is, or a gangbang, or a blowbang, or you know, all these things we've talked about, like circle in terms jerk, of, you know, <laughs> right? Whatever it is, in terms of some etiquette to go in with, of like, how do you go in as the guy that people say, "Wow, thank you for inviting him," or "Thank you for inviting her," like they were just a really cool addition to this. Um, and I don't speak on behalf of the, the party I go to because I've only been going there a couple years. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been in existence a long time, but. To the best of my knowledge, that's how it expanded because it's now a party that like will have about 200 people over the course of oh, the wow. night. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, wow. the doors open at 10. The, and the, and I love this rule. The rule is you have to leave by 11 a.m. unless you have permission to stay over. So what's fun is when I go home <laughs> and I wake up at like 9 a.m. by accident, I wake up being like, you know, there's probably somebody fucking in that house right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um and I think it did start with like email invite because I got invited because someone uh, in that community did like a birthday party through mm -hmm. that party. And so he invited me. I woke up sick and couldn't make it, but that got me on their email list. Mm. He vouched for me enough to have me on the the blast. And That's then eventually great. I was able to go. Yeah. Um, so I just think like, yeah, and they make sure everyone knows who was referred to mm -hmm. by whom. Mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. right. if they ever catch someone being an issue, they're like, well, who, mm -hmm. how did they get into our community? Who right. brought them here? And then that might be an issue. Or, you right. know, if yeah. you bring one or two people who, you know, prove to not be good people to be having a party, you know, they might take away your invite privileges, wow. for example. Yeah. Uh, that's always a good thing to do is always mm -hmm. keep track of that. Uh, when it comes to, I don't know, et consent etiquette, uh, Hacienda, when you walk in, you know, when you go to coat check, you have to, uh, you hear a quick consent speech. There's rules in the email uh, invite. It just, right. it just basically says, don't be an asshole. Yeah. Ask before you do any touch. Like, let's say like uh, a any one of you and I were talking and flirting. Mm -hmm. And at one point I wanted to like put my uh, hand on your shoulder in like a kind of flirtatious way. I'm supposed to first ask like, do you mind before I put my hand mm. on your shoulder? Like clear right. That's great. your ways to touch. Uh, I remember there was one party they ha handed out bracelets uh, and they say, I consent to touch. Um, 
for oh, like okay. non-sexual touch. So if I wanted to give someone a hug uh, who had the braces on, I know that they don't need. But a hug is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm. there's some people who like will freak out if you touch them and don't even ask. And yeah. some are like, yeah, man, yeah. just don't grab my junk. But hey, what's up? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, just like. To talk about the rules up front. Uh, newbies at the party have to go to an orientation. They're on their mm-hmm. first party nice. where they do like mm-hmm. a 20 minute talk about consent and awkwardness and I don't know how to conduct mm-hmm. yourself at a party, how to like talk to someone and not open with like, yeah, we're all in an orgy, but that doesn't mean you should open with like, hey, want to fuck every time. Yeah. 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 Right. You yeah. still got to talk to the person. It's still yeah. a person. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, um, that's yeah. that's great. That's 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 a cool way to go about it of of kind of having that orientation and like getting people yeah. into that. Um, one last like kind of potentially rudimentary question, but I wanted to ask. Um, I know you have a girlfriend, and if you ever go to these parties with her, um, what do you do to kind of combat jealousy, either from her end or from your end? Um, what are kind of some good I don't know, tactics that you can explain in order to not have her or you get jealous in that well, kind of I mean, situation. I, I feel like that's a trick question because I feel like, <laughs> or it, does it just happen? It's just I going feel, to happen. I feel like we all read the same book. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, it's not well, that we don't can, get jealous. It's can, that we will talk about it if it happens. If I can clarify a little bit, um, because yes, we all read the same book. And sure. and the thing is that like on our podcast, you know, obviously we do talk about jealousy a lot, you know, from the relationship sure. standpoint of, you know, your partner going out on a first date with somebody else. And it's a lot of like, you know, kind of more complicated, more sophisticated, more philosophical discussions on jealousy. However, you know, if you have a couple going to a play party, sometimes jealousy is going to come up in that moment. Yeah, and you don't sure. necessarily have the time to have a big, deep philosophical Reflection. Go right yeah, in your journal sure. for a exactly. while. Exactly. Like, yeah. And so I yeah. guess I think kind of what we're looking for to give our listeners is like specific tips for like if you're if you are in that moment, you know, when you get the twinge or something like that, you know, kind of what your coping mechanism is for being able to, you know, still have a good night. And then, you know, maybe we can talk about this yeah. later after the party or something like that. I mean, first thing I would say is clear up what your protocol is going to be before you get to the party yeah so know the plan so is it like does do either of you have veto power um are you allowed to interrupt a scene that you're not involved with if you're really needing them right now uh things like that you know go over that i i remember not with my girlfriend Paige, but with a date i had brought um to like my second party i said we we decide to give each other veto power uh, mm. just because it would make us both feel more comfortable. Just just for that party though, right? Just like, for that party, we right. weren't huh. long term dating, but it was her first group party. It was I was new to that party, so I didn't have a lot of friends there yet. And I'm very so like, I'm still pretty awkward, especially at parties, whether it's an orgy party or like a normal birthday party. Like I'm <laughs> I struggle with groups of strangers sometimes. For sure. Um, unless there's a microphone in my hand, then I'm, I do <laughs> decent. Uh, uh, so I remember at one point I was at the bar and she's like, I'm going to go walk around. I was like, cool. And then she actually came back to like, Hey, I was talking to this guy and we're thinking about fucking, uh, is, is that still okay? Because we hadn't had sex yet. I was mm-hmm. having, kind of, I was having a little bit of a shy dick night, uh, up until that point. Mm-hmm. And I was feeling really self-conscious about it. And I was having trouble talking to people, sexually or non-sexually at the time so i said actually you know i i'm not feeling so hot right now like would you mind not right now and she's like absolutely she didn't even think twice she said absolutely she went back she told the guy hey maybe later uh Mm -hmm. because we had discussed this beforehand she came back and we hung out uh later that night we totally were able to have sex and she was able to have sex with other people but in that moment i was feeling self-conscious and i needed somebody there yeah and Mm -hmm. we had gone over that before mm-hmm. getting there. Uh, Paige and I, my, my current girlfriend, uh, what she has expressed is that she would rather not see me right now hook up with partners, uh, new or old, that she hasn't met yet. Hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's her particular thing. She'll feel more comfortable and confident uh, if she already knows them. So if I, like, if I make out with a friend of hers, she has in mind she knows that person but if she sees me like get a blowjob from a chick she hasn't met yet she's gonna feel uncomfortable so we work that out even if it's a simple in- introduction or just me making sure i'm doing that in a room she's not in yeah but i also huh. don't like go fuck around much at the parties anyway i if i go with a date i'm usually 
with them. that date mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. or with mm-hmm. or I'm playing around with someone I've already played around with before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm very shy. I'm kind of a kind of a wuss. I don't I don't <laughs> um, make too many moves. I would you see, say you're uh, kind of a you're kind of a testicle, is what you're saying. Uh, a little bit of a testicle, <laughs> yeah, man. A little bit. Nice. Yeah. Uh, no, so, that, and that's that's cool. I like that idea, and this is something I've talked about with with various partners, including Dedeker, of like going, like of being, because you're not Polly with your girlfriend, but even being Polly, the difference between kind of your your rules or or lack of rules, as we generally encourage in your life as a whole, versus like at this specific event. And so I think it's kind of cool that you brought that up, of like, hey. I'm nervous going to this event with your friends, even if it's not a play party. I'm yeah. just being right. like, is it cool if I like have a, a ripcord I can pull? If I give you yeah. this signal, that we just bail? And, <laughs> and the right? question could be a no. The answer could be a no, but it's just good to go over that before the party mm-hmm. rather than mm-hmm. yes. having a freak out moment and they're not even aware that that was a possibility. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you're having an incident outside while they're still naked because you just like pulled her off some cock, right? It's like... Yeah. Right. Um, it's good to have those safety nets in plan. The first party I went to, you know, the girl and I, we were not dating seriously. Mm-hmm. And we decided, she said she didn't want to have us to have veto power. So when I, when she was fucking a guy who was like, Ugh, I was kind of squeaked out by it. Uh-huh. Uh, I didn't have a right to tell her not to do that. So that was a me emotion. So the other side of things are, you know, remembering that jealousy is your emotion that you Mm -hmm. have to deal with. So your game plan may not involve being able to stop a scene. It may mean, okay, we'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that may mean you have to be an adult enough to Mm. remove yourself from the scenario for a while and go talk to some other people, go have a drink or go, get some fresh air Mm -hmm. and then communicate that with your partner after they're done eating someone out or fucking somebody or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, communication. Yeah. Yeah. Always. That's what it boils down to. (laughs) It really does. Um, So speaking of that, um, so we got our last question for you so we can kind of wrap things up here. Um, and this is the question that we ask of all of our guests that come on the Multi Amory podcast. Um, if you had just one piece of advice that you could give to someone who is considering a non-monogamous relationship, um, what would that one piece of advice be? Uh, I would say just don't dive in head first or don't do the from zero to 100, like start off going like 25 miles per hour. Can you handle seeing your other your significant other like make out with somebody? Because you can't mm-hmm. handle them making out with somebody. Maybe you can't handle seeing them get double teamed at a party. <laughs> right. Uh, or maybe you can if there's no kissing. But the idea is like, you know, take baby steps mm-hmm. um, and then, all you know, always communicate. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so can you tell our listeners if they want to check out more of your stuff, uh, where can they find you? Uh, well, you can find the Man Whore podcast on iTunes or Spotify or really any podcast app that is in SoundCloud. Uh, just search Man Whore and that's me. Uh, and then you can find me on Twitter at the Billy Procida. That's P-R-O-C-I-D-A. And you can also like the Man Whore podcast on Facebook. Uh, I also have a Patreon, but you shouldn't give to it unless you've like listened to my show. But hopefully you'll get to that point and love it and want to uh, become one of my patrons too. Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, and no, if you thank know, you I'm, for having me. Yeah. Uh, uh, and if you guys want to get in touch with us, you can email us at info at multiamory.com. Let us know if there's something you wish we had talked about on this episode or a topic you would like us to cover or guest suggestions. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Twitter at multiamory. You can check out our Patreon at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash multiamory. Uh, join our Facebook uh, at multiamory, right? Multiamory, just search it. You'll find it in a bunch of places. <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, we will talk to you next week. I know. All right, bye-bye. Hey, this is Dan Savage from the Savage Lovecast and Savage Love, and you're listening to a Swing Set podcast at Swing Set FM. <laughs>